Hello there, everybody, and welcome to another one of these random videos that I just upload that don't correlate with any series, but we just do for the hell of it. Anthony joining you once again, and as you can see, I have a tier list in front of me, and I'm joined by Tank and Legendary tonight. How you gentlemen doing? Uh, uh, There's the fly again! <laughs> what was that? Oh god. <laughs> Tank, you okay? Okay, so it's Maybe. apparently Tank's turn to have technical issues, but... Whatever, um, so today we are here doing a- we're starting a little mini-series of videos that me and Legendary plan on doing on both of our channels. I'll have a link to Legendary's channel in the description if you want to go check that out alongside Tank's Twitch page, which I have been spamming constantly because you should go watch both of them. They're awesome. Yeah. Anyways, we are going to be ranking uh, pretty much every official uh, Transformers TCG card. So how we're going to do this is we're going to go by rarity and by card type with the exception of stratagems. That's a whole other issue that we may or may not dive into. So we're going to do like all the common battle cards from a wave or something like that. But for characters, we're just going to do all characters of one rarity. And we're going to start off this little mini series by talking about all the super rare. So I have every single super rare right here from cliff jumper to wait whatever happened in wave five and we're gonna go ahead and rank them and as you can see we have a patented method for ranking them up here let's go over the tiers opbl it was unquestionably amazing and dominated the game a tier it was good and saw consistent play b tier it was okay it had a couple of weaknesses though c tier it was meh and had a lot of inconsistencies. D tier, nobody could figure the damn thing out. And Cup is just, this card was objectively trash. So we're just going to go through one at a time and try and figure out where everything is. And things might get adjusted as time goes on because that's how this list goes. So uh, let's start with the uh, the black sheep of the two cards in the uh, Comic-Con pack. Let's talk about Slipstream. Um... What are you guys Whoa. thinking? Whoa, why are we starting with Slipstream? Well, I mean, Cliff Jumper's a little too obvious. Let's start with Slipstream. Slipstream. Uh, Slipstream had a lot of success in the early. Yeah. Kind of fell off uh, as attack values got bigger and Slipstream what? was less. Uh, it got the lower end of that stick, obviously, having free attack in the alt mode, which is the mode she wants to stay in. So, uh, right. So I'm actually going to argue that she's A-tier material. And the only reason I'm going to argue that is the combo that she has with Windsweeper means that Windsweeper can move three damage off of himself every turn, or whenever he attacks. And to be fair... So, so that, she's, that, she's, she started high, petered off, and then came back up. But here's is the that thing. more Windsweeper doing that, though? Or is that more Slipstream? That's doing? more Windsweeper. Well, Slipstream doesn't. Yeah, it's more Windsweeper, I would argue. Slipstream enables that, but Windsweeper is really the core piece there. And like I said, A was consistently competitively viable. There was that period where Slipstream dipped off. Now, don't get me wrong, she still is a valuable card because she's instrumental in so many plane strategies. But, on, but like, when you look outside of Windsweeper and in the early days, just early plane builds, she doesn't do a whole lot. I mean, I've tried to use her for her bot mode ability for a, a few times, and it just doesn't work. So if there was, like, if there, like I would perfect, if there was, like, a perfect situation to slot her in, I'd argue it's, like, a in-between B and C tier. But I think the fact that she's really, she, like, pushed plane decks, especially ones involving Windsweeper, to a point, so I'd honestly argue she's B-tier, if anything. I say high well, B, low A. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I I personally, I really like Windsweeper, because she's she was a planes staple for literally ever. Right. You could not make a planes deck without playing Slipstream in some way, shape, or form. Right, and when... Right. Until, when I, of course, the ASP came in, but right. that's... And I mean, like, when I built my planes deck to try to beat Omega Supreme during the files, I instantly went Windsweeper Slipstream, and then I threw in Power Glide because Power Glide seemed decent against Omega, but that's a whole other issue. So, we locking in Omega or Slipstream high B tier? Yep. Alrighty. That's good. Alrighty, Cliff Jumper, where are we putting this sucker? I say he. He needs his own tier below Cup. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a damn minute. Hold on. Explain yourself. He's overplayed, he's overhyped. Get him the f out of here. We are not doing a meme tier. We are looking at this objectively. I think Cliff Jumper deserves A, and he has to be yeah. high. Yeah. 
Yeah, like I mean, in terms of function, he's 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 an incredibly good resource for cars. Yeah, but like the top of the A tier. God, he's so fucking overplayed. I really? yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, he's like, got the same complex as Slipstream, and that you can't build a cars deck without him for the most yeah. part. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, you, I mean, you, you can. You can. I was about but to say, it's just extremely slips, difficult. Yeah, Slipstream. You can build a car, uh, a planes deck without her. But, but like, she is pretty... You could le take her or leave her and you could replace her with someone else. The thing with... The Cliff thing Jumper, with... you have to have in a Cars deck. And the thing with... The Cliff... Cars deck does not function as well without Cliff Jumper. Right, and, like, even decks that only run one other car, I mean, Brian's list that one encounter run ran Cliff Jumper alongside Exhaust and then used Crash Bash as the third character. So as long as you have one car to enable Cliff Jumper, you're golden. And what puts Cliff Jumper over Slipstream in that... Because they're both that same... They make their archetype role... But Cliff Jumper is it is that finishing move that Cars has. I mean, they can already put out a shit ton of damage because of all their untapped shenanigans. But then you throw on a finisher like Cliff Jumper, and boom, you're golden. And then there's the fact that he just has infinitely better stats than Slipstream. There is that too. Um, they're That's both true. and they're they're yeah. both eight stars. So when you look at right. it in that light, uh, yeah. So I so well again we'll rearrange things in in the tiers themselves as time goes on. But I think let's move on to the, the Black Sheep of the Wave 1 in pack rares, uh, Bumblebee Legendary Warrior. Where are we slotting this sucker? He's oh, such gosh. a bizarre character because he's had so many ups and downs throughout like every wave. He, he, he was good in Wave 1 as, a, as the 10-cost car in car steps. Right. But he eventually petered off in favor of Lieutenant B. But as more wide decks uh, came in, he became more popular because he could attack untapped characters. And that's a really powerful ability, which they've given to a couple other characters, but it's... I, I He's so bizarre. I think he has to be beneath Slipstream. Yeah, I'd argue... I, I think he's... I'd, ar I'd argue that because of his inconsistency in terms of, like, his usage and, like, how people have played him, I'd argue he's at, like, high C tier at best, more likely in um, the middle of C tier, if anything. There's also the fact that Bumblebee has to be your last character alive to get the most use out of him, which means that, by default, when you're building a deck with him, he has to be the character you attack out with. And he's not really the kind of character you want to attack out with because wanting to attack an untapped character means that you want to try and send him in earlier to to try and you know just hit somebody who's untapped right but you also want him to be your last character alive and not the character who takes a hit because he's got that stat boost in bot mode so i would actually almost put him in uh d tier personally just because like it, it seems like his effects are a little bit miss... Like, they, they don't synergize that well. Yeah, I mean, with the I whole think... nobody can figure it out thing, I mean, maybe low C tier, high D tier, legendary, you were saying something? To me, the way I look at Bumblebee is that the last character standing thing is just a nice bonus on top of being able to attack non-attack, or er, untapped characters. I think that's a very powerful ability, and people are using it mostly for that, not even uh, for his bot mode effect at all, really. Yeah, but I, if you're going for that, uh, if you're going for that ability, and you're, you why not save five stars and just play Razor Claw? That's that's fair, but Razor Claw doesn't have five base attack. I mean, you got a and point he can't there. Tap every other turn. Yeah, you got a point there. I guess so. I think I think he's a solid C, but he's like mid C. I'd argue yeah. he's lower C, but that's just... I think we're all agreeing that he's C tier at best. Yes. Alrighty. Nemesis, is this going in A tier or OPBL? Talk that's to me. OPBL. 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 Not yeah, even a question. Yeah, like, because he... Nemesis... Was, it was double primes, and then it was um, prime ASP. Like, unquestionably, he is OPBL. He's probably the best, best on this... He is probably... Yes. Well, second best character ever made, probably. OPBL, like, number one, obviously. No. He is he is far and away, I think, the game's stats are insane for wave one. Can we talk Not, about that? Yeah, his stats are insane. Mm -hmm. Every time he gets through your deck, he gets plus 
uh, plus two, or is it plus, plus three? three? It's plus three. So yeah. As soon as you go through your deck once, he's a base ten attack character that can't, like, you can't do anything about that either. Yeah. It's just that attacks are there. He's now ten attack. Well, I yeah. mean, yeah. technically, and, technically, you can turn about snare him, but that's a whole other issue. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and you don't, and the there's like three different ways you can, three or four different ways you can burn through your deck. You can focus it. You can bold it. You can tough it. You can draw it. Like, there's so many easy ways to get through your deck quickly and keep triggering Nemesis. Right. Which is why I think um, one one that, one deck that I saw locally was Nemesis, Aimless, and Flame War. Wave 1 Flame War. Right. And you could give Aimless tough 3 by just flipping Flame War and sending him in, and that's going to... And that's going to burn off at least six cards from your deck right there right. when when he when someone goes into him next. So yeah, Nemesis is absolutely an, like a, a top tier character. He is, in my honest opinion, pro I do agree I, actually with Legendary. I think he's the game's best character, hands down. Alrighty, so I, I said one I, of the best characters to be fair. No, but well, okay, mine. I put him at the very top. I think he is the game's best character. I don't. I, I think. He's I mean, simple, he's elegant, his ability is really cool. I think he's perfect. I, I don't think you can really... And plus, he was he was in the game from the start to the end. And you can still play him in fan sets and other tournaments, and he's still going to be just as effective now as he was at the start of the game. So I think... So. If not more so, yeah. So I think Nemesis is the perfect... Exa is like the epitome of Transformers TCG characters. Alrighty, so oh, we I think we have we have we have beaten this horse yeah. dead. So we're gonna go from one of the best to one of the worst Metroplex. I think we can. It's either D tier or Cup. Uh, like, I wanna, hate saying it. I want to say low C, high D. Yeah, I was gonna say low C. I think with um, I think with some of the the stuff that came towards the end of the game, where you could get a lot of bold and. Master so Metallicado. on and so forth. Master yes. Metalcado. Yeah, that's a huge boon to Metroplex. So I think that he's C tier, low C. Okay, so we'll put him at the, we'll keep him at the very bottom of C. I think we can all right. agree on that. Yeah. Okay. Uh Wave 1 Springer. Oh, so that's a, that's Wave a... 2 Springer wave first two, off, two. and that is a cup tier. That is a cup tier. Look, uh, that look, is I a have cup tier. I have seen Springer go off once. I think it was Veril who was running a deck that healed Springer for I think like 15 over the course of the game. Jeez. Thanks this, to a strat, so, I mean... It, one... But, like... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, this... this Compared to... Especially compared to the other Springer that stays in the f***ing corner, this thing is an utter trash heap. Like, I get what they were going for, but, like, they couldn't have buffed his stats up a little bit? Because isn't he, like, 11 or 12 stars? Yeah, he's 12, I think. 12 stars. He's oh my fucking god. Like, what are his stats even? Isn't he like a 3, like 6, uh, 3.14.2 in bot mode or something like that? Hold on, let me 4, pull 4.14.2, I have him up. 4.14.2 in alt 1, 5.14.1 in alt 2, and 3.14.1 in, in bot mode. Well, oh, I just noticed an error on Teletran. It has him listed as 6.14.2 in alt mode. I need to go... Damn, uh, if he was a 6.14.2 in alt mode, I would actually f***ing play him. Yeah, right. so I need so <laughs> somebody needs to let Zero know about that, but... We will. We, but that's, again, that's the point. Like, what are you... Like, He's even, so forgettable. Even the strat doesn't do anything for him, so... Well, I, I was about I was gonna comment. Like there was a kid at my locals who ran Springer with his strat and then I think it was Outback and Brawn and there and like I think both of their strats or one of their strats and he kicked butt, but that's because nobody was anticipating Springer to make a showing at all. And what was really what it was was that he put conversion engine on Springer, and at the end of every turn, he'd flip him back to truck mode and give him tough two. Oh yeah, that'll do it. That's fascinating. <laughs> okay. So yeah, we... it was a, it was a really interesting deck. It wasn't. It was funny. It was cool to watch because like no one ever put Springer on the table, but at the same time, it's the only time I have ever heard of anyone putting Springer on the table. And I had a Springer, <laughs> like I had a Springer for like three months, and I didn't even use him. I just traded him off. <laughs> Yeah, that happened. So, okay. 
Um, next up, let's move on to, uh, Starscream, the Decepticon King. I'm thinking C tier on this one, because there was a lot of people messing around with this thing at the start of Wave 2, I think it was, like, Flame War and Drag Strip, but he's kind of petered off ever since. I think he's D tier. D tier? I think his drag yeah. makes him a little bit more playable than he was, but he's still too, he's still too fragile. Honest which is so bizarre, considering that he... He does. He does stuff. <laughs> he does a lot of stuff whenever he gets going. Yeah, like, like honestly, he has to actually get going. Honestly, like I think yeah. his strat causes him to conflict with himself. Like I made a comment about this in the Every Way Five Card and Nine Words or Less video, where it's just like I, I basically said like the sh you don't put the crown on him ever. Like you want to be flipping it. So, but that, well, but the stratagem's a whole other issue on his own. Like. I mean, people kind of, again, they people had him somewhat figured out with Drag Strip and Flame War, but aside from that, like, he's never done anything, and just nobody could figure out what the hell to do with him. He is D tier. Um, I don't disagree with that, in all honesty, especially for 13 stars, he's 13 D tier. Stars. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But there, there is something to be said about the fact that he can't, he, he does want to use the crown. Because if he, you can flip a Decepticon crown, and you can grab it, he'll get that plus three or plus, or he'll either get the plus three attack or plus three defiance, you can grab it, use it to get him some, uh, an upgrade that plans, and then if you can get your second copy of the crown, you can keep planning the crown down just over and over and over and over again. Right. And just leave that bonus. But that's... He is... Legendary's right. Once he gets rolling, he's absolutely... A good he can absolutely put in work but i think before he gets rolling or before you can even set that up it's probably not gonna happen yeah and the thing like, with this no game is you have to be you have to find characters that are able to start doing their thing right out of the gate i mean Ch tank you've mentioned this a couple of times that's why champions deck that he's played for both encounter two and encounter three is so infuriating just because he could already spam out like seven pier seven right off the bat right i mean Captain he, o he always opens up with brawn and brawn without fail usually hits for like seven pier seven or on like, his first swing of the game or like last line with of defense, no upgrades last line of defense omega's usually swinging in for nine in on the first turn or two and then he's already got a ghost shield on him by about turn two just because of stuck on you like that is what yeah. you need in this game you need to be hitting right right out of the gate unless you're a control deck then you need to get your pinging right off the bat so and starscream just that setup time kills him yeah it's it's and it's no fault of like his stats or anything like his stats are actually not even bad it's just the fact that upgrades and planning you know <laughs> upgrades people upgrades yeah so uh let's go ahead and move on from this trash heap to another one windblade i think oh, we put this in cup tier cup tier yeah, cup tier At, like i get Beneath what they were Springer. going for but like combiners outside of superion were never viable hell they still aren't so like windblade is just a turd and then her strat yeah. makes her a 13 star that again does nothing if you're a worse card than autobot springer and, uh, you have problems. Like at least, problem. at least Springer can function on its own. Windblade. The problem with Windblade is that it relies too heavily on your opponent bringing something. And, and yes. That that just you could rely on it a little bit. I mean, like the um, sturdy armor, covert armor, uh, reflex circuits. Those were good, but they they like didn't fully rely on the opponent having something but they had that option available windblade is just in order for her to be good your opponent has to be playing something specific and even then it's not that good in that role so windblade yeah. was always born to be a sideboard card was never actually going to be played in any sideboard ever yeah like if you're going to play a 12 star in the sideboard you might as well just go to nemesis right <laughs> exactly part of part of why the why Windblade is not good is because towards the end of the game they finally figured out that a 12 star character had to have a stat line somewhere near Nemesis Prime, which usually means they have to have around 18, 16 to 18 health. Right. So Windblade being 14, having an ability that is hyper conditional and like a uh, alt mode flip. 
Yeah, and an, that is the most meh alt mode flip I've ever seen. And I mean, they did try to rectify her stat line with her strat, but that puts oh, her, her strat, closer to, to OP. That that that. Yeah, that compares her to OPBL, and compared to OPBL, she just sucks. Because OPBL is, again, a one-man wrecking crew that can just do whatever the hell he needs to. Yeah, her wow. Plus her one health, plus one defense strat or something like that. It's, I yeah, that's it. I thought it was plus it. one attack. That's like all whatever. it gives her. Uh, let, uh, let me check. Let me check, actually. I should be able to find this. While you're uh, doing that, let's move on. Let's talk about Blitzwing. This sucker is just weird. I like Blitzwing. I think I like him, too. Metroplex. I think you put him above Metroplex. Yeah, he but... has his uses. He has his uses. I would actually put him above B, to be personally honest. Uh, I wouldn't just because, like... Nobody was ever to. F I don't think anybody was ever able to figure out something consistent with him. Honestly, no, I no, 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 no. There, Blitzwing, Sky Tread and Blitzwing, and oh, then yeah, between uh, between waves, I think two and four, when that lot when that area was still being filled, you had Wave One RC and Thrust and Blitzwing, oh, and Blitzwing could keep drawing aggro. Oh right, I forgot about that deck. That's yeah. Awesome. I, yeah, I forgot. Exactly. About that. Okay, so I I think personally, Blitzwing is a high C or low B character. I would not say he's perfect, but I would say he has a, he has his uses. Well, I given think in that you said with this try, he's above B. Honestly, like yeah, I, but well, I think looking, I think high at, C. Then we're looking at the overall historical context of this, and considering that people were able to at least figure something out with him compared to Legendary B, who's kind of an enigma. I think we put Blitzwing at high C tier. Yeah, I think that's fair. Okay, so General Megatron, are we putting this at the top of Cup he's, or the bottom of D? He's tough because he had a lot of success whenever he first came out. Like he he dominated my locals for a long time before people were like. Oh, bashing shield, huh? Yeah. Uh, and disarm and all those things. I, I think you put him above Metroplex, personally. Eh, I mean... Because so like, he's got a flip ability that you can ping with. You can ping three damage somewhere. Yeah, but you have that's to get good. those attack drone, and the problem is, like... And that's not hard. I mean, you're right, it's not, but... I mean... Hmm. I was gonna say... That he, the with... other thing, he's 13 stars, so what exactly are you pairing him with? You do Aimless Flame War. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Cause well, you... that, that would take us on to a different character uh, who I think is infinitely better than this at the same star cost, but mm, we'll get to him. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's definitely not the best 13... Uh, uh, 13 star blue no that title character. always has been opbl he's easily the best 13 star but in the grand scheme of things again you no, have, again we go, it goes back to that thing i was talking about with starscream you have to set him up properly and if you can't get quick setup in this game you're gonna get chewed up alive i think that's debatable in that's my opinion I was also going to say, like, the thing with Megatron is it's not specifically, well, yeah, it's not specifically weapons that he needs. It's just so, higher, like, his, it's his alt mode that needs the weapons. Yeah, his alt mode needs the weapons, and of course, Attack Drone works there. But his bot mode, you can use um, X-Pads or even Triangulators if you're desperate and get all those upgrades out on him. Um, he, in, in that aspect, he's kind of like where you can go with any of the collect them all upgrades at, to get something out on the field. So I don't, I don't think he's that bad, but I think that, he, yeah, I do agree. His setup time needed is what's going to kill him in the long run. Yeah, at least with Metroplex, there's kind of a clear, like, there's like an easy way to get him going to an extent. Megatron, it's a little more tough, but it's not as tough as Starscream, so I say low C tier below Metroplex. Yeah. Alrighty, Major... I disagree with that, but... Wait. Yeah, you no. Know. Okay, let's move on. Major Shockwave. This is either, like, I'm, pr I'm thinking, like, low A tier, roughly, but you guys are free to argue with me on this one, just because he was, like, in, like, a meta where PT or PTA was running around like crazy, he was, like, one of the few viable Decepticons, along with, like, Flame War, I think. I think that Major Shockwave should be above Cliff. Oh. That's a hot take for me, though. I, I haven't gotten to play with him a whole lot, actually. The fact that he can look at the top card of your deck, 
play it if it's a certain type of card, which he loves the LV Gamma Disruptor Launchers. And the fact that his flip ability to alt mode is just so incredibly powerful, I think that he deserves to be above Cliff Jumper. Yeah, and also Cliff Plus his did... stat line is is, is, is is it's not great for a fourteen cost or yeah, fourteen cost, let's be honest. Seventeen health is not a lot. Uh at least in like modern day perspective. Yeah. But, it's the same health as Nem, so yeah, uh, well, no, Nemesis 16. Nemesis uh, has 16, but... Oh, he's got one more health than Nemesis yeah. Prime. And also... So, and he, two more stars. His right. stats were still mind-blowing for the time, so... Right. I, I, I think... I think he deserves to have a spot above Cliff Jump. Yeah, and also, let's look at this. Shockwave was topping events while he while he, while the game was still officially supported. How often did Cliff Jumper cars top? Not as frequently as Shockwave, I think. There was a couple. There was a couple I'm lists not that, that hit that, weren't. but... But not as frequently as Shockwave, and plus Cliff I, Jumper I being having a, that accessibility thing with Cliff Jumper was an issue. But Shockwave, even though he was a super rare, was a lot more accessible considering he wasn't in like a three promo pack that was only like what three thousand copies or something like that. And, then, and I managed to have one copy of Slipstream of the SDCC packs. All yeah. Right. So okay, last wave th or. Th Last in pack wave three super rare major ultra nope. magnet. You have one more. You have one more. What's the other Past one? Pass magnet. Yeah, what Kong. I said. Magnet. Oh, Kong. Oh God, we'll get to him in a minute. But Magnus, where? <laughs> uh, the, not Fort Max. Magnus, where are we? I love we? Magnus. I I love Magnus. Put him above. I'm gonna. I would. I was about to say. I'd put him in high D because with um, heroic res or heroic spotlight, he gets that tiny bit better. Because you can get a full Magnus armor for half the cost. My, but argue, like, my counterpoint to that, nobody was ever really able to figure out what to do with this guy. Whereas with Starscream, there was at least somewhat of a vision forming at the start of Wave 2. And then out of the gates with Wave 3... Legendary, was about... <laughs> Legendary, you were about to advocate for him being in like high C tier or something, I right? Put him above General Megatron. <laughs> General, yeah, Me like General this, Megatron, at least you can try to sculpt what he's doing, but... With Ultra me, Magnus, he's just, just so weird. You can you can Ultra Magnus and Inferno, but that is just so. I love that. I love it. I love that list. But like Ultra Magnus is just like it's kind of a conflicting identity thing, similar to B. Like he wants to be a tank in alt mode, but he doesn't have the stats for it. And then in bot mode, he just wants to spread damage around the board. But well, how often do you want mode. your character? The bot mode is awful. How ignore often do you want your mode. characters taking damage? Which is exactly why I'm going to ignore it. It's the ult mode we're looking at here, and he wants to be a tank, but he needs the Ultra Magnus armor to be the tank, and that puts him at essentially a 13-star um, investment, like you said, with Heroic Spotlight. But at that point, what are you pairing him with? Um, I have Nemesis. seen him... <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you could pair him with Nemesis. Well, no, you can't pair him with Nemesis if you're doing Heroic Spotlight. That's true, exactly. That's true, that's true. So, um, again, you're locked into Autobots. I, there now. was a... There was a list that I saw where it was, I think, him and Wave 1B oh. that had some some play. There was the, 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 the Ultra Magnus Grimlock list. Y'all, the inverted list. The one you ran heavy blue and then gave inverted to Grimlock while he smacked up people and Magnus guarded him. I have Ooh. never heard of that. I love that list. That was one of my favorite decks I've ever played. I was about to say, I've never, I've never heard that one either, but that sounds like a good old time. It's um, so fun. He's still a bit of an enigma. Um, I'm not. I I would okay. I would put Magnus above Starscream just because, just because you you can't play Magnus without the Magnus armor, which means that at least for some portion of the game, he's got a super high defense. He's got decent attack. He's got brave. Um, there is some possibility, I guess, if you have him in the right line, that he can. Ping a bunch of people, which is not likely, but it's there. Um, but yeah, I, th I think he's I think he's higher than Starscream, just because I think Starscream is a little weird. Yeah. So, so okay. So final wave three, uh, super rare. Let's talk about this busted ass de machine. So odd. Because because he was completely unplayed until that daring escape death. Right, and outside of that, like. 
I mean, he's still he, unplayed. He, he, to put an analogy here, he is the St. Louis Blues. They, he, they, he sucks for the majority of the history, but somehow just gets a random blip of success out of nowhere and then just dips off again. It's so bizarre. Like, his stat line in bot mode is nothing to like, talk about. Yeah, it's it just so bad. And then, like, the upgrade mode seems decent until you remember that upgrade removal is f***ing everywhere. Especially with and disassemble coming out of wave more five. More, gun, more guns. Like if you we're can't play him anymore with no gun. Yeah, you can't. Uh, so, but in, if you look at if, he gives he gives a static plus four attack. I mean That's that can't true. be overlooked. But let's be real, nobody was using him for that. But the I was about to say, but is a static plus four attack worth ten stars? And my honest answer for that is not really. Absolutely. So like if we're looking at that blip of de success. He's easily an A tier, but if you look at his overall history, he's easily either cup or D tier. I would put him between. I'm I'm gonna put him D tier just because of that blip of success. Without that, he is absolutely yeah. cup. Legendary, you are absolutely right. I would put him above Star Scream. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. So we're gonna put that he, in there because he did have some success, but he's confused. Yes. He's absolutely. very confused. So, yeah. Okay, uh, moving on to Blaster versus Soundwave. Uh, this is going to be an inter interesting discussion. Soundwave, I think, should go in B tier, just because people no. are starting to realize no. what he is capable of now. But no. a, a, for a no. while before, it's just like no. nobody no. got him. No. 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 Put him below Metroplex. Uh, I would not put him below Metroplex. Yeah, put I'd him put him. Metroplex. I would put him between <laughs> B and Metroplex. Yeah, that's fair. I agree with that. So above because no, did you not uh, fucking hear me? I said between B and Metroplex. Oh, I thought I you. Agree with oh, that. I thought you said met B tier. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, put him, put him right there. I think. Yeah. He he has a really good flip ability. Like, don't yes. get me wrong. It's just, what does he do outside of that? Yeah. What does he do? What does he do? Yeah, and, like, you could theoretically pair him with, like, a Paralyzo box, because you put that card onto your right. opponent's that deck. That's a pretty strong combo. But the problem is that no, none of his characters that he pairs with, none of his Decepticon cassettes are ranged. They're all either melee or specialist. So you can't even, like, you have to draw a Paralyzo box. So, like, yeah, I, I like him. I think that he's really cool. Um, his flip ability is interesting, but like, I don't think he's, I don't think he's solid enough to stand up to a lot of heavy abuse. Also, so now that I think about it, he has absolutely zero late game plan. He is an early character purely. Right. So I guess, as yeah. As soon as he's deployed all cassettes from under him, assuming you never draw another recover cassette, but he, he's just kind of there to soak up damage and protect the cassettes. Right. And let's be real. Who the hell was playing recover cassette? Uh, I tried I it. I usually played as like a one or two of you, yeah, but that, those were like the few times I actually tried. So, so there was uh, at my locals. There was a couple people who were playing uh, Blaster, and I was like, I bet they'll have Recover Cassette. So I had Nightbird. I had um, Soundwave, Nightbird, and two cassettes. I think it was probably Ravage and Laserbeak or something like that. Right. And none of them had Recover Cassette, so I, mean, I couldn't. Beak. I couldn't. I think it. Oh, not Laserbeak. Uh, Buzzsaw. Buzzsaw. Yeah, that, that Buzzsaw. makes a bit more And, like, of course, they were all aggro, so there was no one who was running Recover Cassette, and I was just crying, because I was like, I had an idea! <laughs> just, no! So, oh, yeah, man. speaking of Blaster, um, I think we can all agree this goes in A tier. I yes. think he's a... You know me. I am the Blaster player. I know everything there is to know about him. <laughs> degree. I think... He's above Slipstream. I personally I think that he was good for like a week, and then he fell off. Eh, I beg to differ. He was doing He's some things. He's still good, I, don't get me wrong. I he thought he would... like a goddamn truck. I but... thought... He's not on the same level as Cliffjumper. Yeah, you got a point not. there, but I thought he was topping events around Wave 4, and then Wave 5 came in and f***ed everything up. No, yeah, wave, exactly. Wave 4 is what messed Blaster up. Like, oh. as soon as Wave 4 came around, Blaster fell off entirely. I wonder that why. I know, because I was still trying to play Blaster in that meta and was losing. I wonder why. I, I really don't even... I, I can't even really explain it myself. It I think that was because Blue 
became really big around that time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even though Pierce, like, because Pierce wasn't, like, big yet. Yeah. So people were still trying to make blue decks work and being successful with it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think because of that, Blaster just didn't have the same damage output that he did, especially considering that Galaxy Prime was a thing. And yeah. because of that, he he wasn't able to get through the the four the three energy packs that he was able to have. Oh, yeah, he just didn't have that damage output, which he should, but he doesn't. Yeah. So blaster at high B tier. I think we can all agree. All right, we can go yeah. on that. Um, let's see. What should we go with next out of wave four? Let's talk about. Well, blaster. I was about to. What I was about to say. Legendary brought up. Of Galaxy Prime, and then you skip over to Sound Blaster, <laughs> sure. Save the best for last, but Sound Blaster, this guy's a f***ing enigma. How many times I have I said he's, that? He's he's so bizarre, because he's been incredibly powerful, but he's, he's been, like, yeah. widely unplayed, which is so crazy. He's really good. The issue is that we needed more black icons, or black icon weapons to go with him. Fusion Boar wasn't a thing when he was... Yeah. And he doesn't even like Fusion Bore that much, because, right. like... Like, the, it, the best weapon for him right now is Cosmic Rust Cannon out of the no. orc, but that's a fan set. No, the best weapon for him in, is Industrial Grade Phase Charge. Right. Because he can scrap it before he attacks, get plus two, and then recover it and get more attack. Right. That, oh, wait, that's a thing? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Right, because not... he scraps it when he attacks to make it a plus three, and then it comes back and it gives him the static plus two that it gives. Okay. So he's, that's a plus five attack buff. Yeah. So you like... want my honest opinion? He goes at the very top of C tier. Yeah, I can. I can. I, I can, I can agree with that. Thing. I can agree with that. So because he is a little bit of an, enig an enigma, but at like towards the end of the game, he started to really come into his own, and people were finally tuning into where he had needed to be with industrial grade phase charge, right? And some of these other cards. So I think he, yeah, and with horrible too. So I think he lands there, but he's still C tier because he's just not quite there yet. Right. So. Yeah, that's uh so that's Sound Blaster. Uh, what other way four rears are? Oh, there? did we? Never mind. Ignore me. All right. Go ahead. Let's talk about uh Trypticon. <laughs> okay. Trypticon. He's cup tier. Cup tier. Uh, beneath Springer. Beneath Springer. Uh, b but above Windblade. Yes. So, cause like people tried to figure him out, and I mean like he's like creeping up in playability, and, like. At the smidgest amount, thanks to scout the area out of the arc, uh, assuming control in BFA kind of does a little bit for him since he likes to play with characters in the KO area. Um, involuntary promotion is still funny as all hell with his minions, but other than those little trick things, he just underwhelming. He's pretty awful. I just love it how, like, in the the interviews with Drew Nolosko when they were taught when Trypticon came out, they're always like, Oh, we had this secret Trypticon lineup we played with in testing that was crazy <laughs> and no one figured it out. No one had any idea. He we kept we kept trying and trying and trying and Trypticon would get his face punched in and everyone's like, What fing secret lineup are you talking about, Drew? It was a secret line of cocaine. Yeah, it was a secret <laughs> line of cocaine <laughs> Yeah, they're just bumping off lines in the design room, and he's like, So get this! The Trypticon deploys all these characters from underneath him! Ah! And you know what else he does? He brings his characters back from the KO area, and he puts them back underneath himself! Just like... <laughs> doing line after line after line of code the whole freaking time. Oh god! What the hell is this? Oh my god! Oh my god! That's that's going on the end of the year highlight reel. Oh, oh my god! I'm crying! I'm crying! All right, yeah. Uh, Trypticon garbage. Yeah, yeah. Trypticon's <laughs> trash. Octone. Uh, I'd say B tier. Like no, no. He he's, he's he he top tournaments and he's still good enough to. I say between Cliff Jumper and Shockwave. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I I, 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 I say he's above Shockwave. 
I take it back. I think he's a buff chocolate. Yeah, yeah. actually, oh, yeah. I agree with that. Now that I'm th- I, now that I'm thinking about it, because even after Wave Five, Octone was still making a good showing in a lot of different places. Yeah, the fact that he there. can swing for eight against obviously yeah. the biggest. <laughs> oh faction, yeah, there is that. And ping them every other turn or every turn with the uh, conversion engine, and then bounty ping two. He's just got so much to him. And he's so powerful. He's really good. And yeah. He's really good. He's mercenary, so he can dual wield, and he gives opportune offensive to your team. And, and also ooh. with BFA, you have quite a haul, which means you fire off for four if you get the KO, or six you know what? if you have a You know what? You know what? I'm going to say it. Put him in OPBL. Absolutely the f*** not. He does like, I think compared he's, like, to he teeters ne- on that line. Like, he, very okay. finely, like, he does not come close to Nemesis, because like you said, Nemesis can get up to 10 fairly quickly. Octone just can't match that. I mean, sure, he has the direct damage thing that can act as a finishing move, but the raw power of Nemesis, and plus the fact he has basically the same thing. He has Fair. one health more for one star more, if, if you want to look at it that way. And yeah. he also has one more attack for one star more. Equal defense in all modes, but he has one extra mode. So, where where does that leave us? I'd say top of A tier. I still think he's top of A tier. Yeah, I can I'll leave, I can agree with that. Okay, top so... of A. My my personal opinion, I think he's S tier, but yeah, I can agree. He's he teeters on that edge. It just depends on person to person. Yeah. Okay. So this is his A tier. Lord Megatron. Oh boy. I say between Slipstream and Blaster. I would agree, because, like, he was really, along yeah. with Impactor, God, was I wrong on that thing, he was the catalyst for all those orange tank decks that were running I around between Wave tanks. 4 and now. Legendary, everyone loves orange tanks. Yeah, like, I mean, seriously, who does? if you don't love orange tanks, you are not a fan of the game. Opponent reshuffles to... It's yeah. The, and there's the whole thing that, like, if he attacks and your opponent reshuffles mid-attack... He gets the orange pips added to his attack whenever he's pinging your opponent for like thirteen. You know. Yeah, that My is God. that is hilarious. So and yeah, Hollow Matter eventually came out afterwards, which did put a little put in his engine, but that doesn't matter. I'm pinging you for thirteen. Also, uh-huh. Bashing Shield exists, so that's true. Yeah, so I think we're all in the consensus that Megatron is definitely B tier. Megatron, good. Alrighty, he's a good card. Galaxy Prime, I think we can agree this goes in A tier somewhere. Maybe Beneath high B tier at worst. Beneath Nemesis. Eh, I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't push it that okay. far. Hawk to... He won the Energon Invitation. Yeah, he won the game's only legal, like, worldwide tournament. I Put mean... Eh. He can have, what? what is it, like, 33 health? Can, can we talk about that? Yeah, but how <laughs> yeah. Much, But the question is, how much setup does that take? Not um, a lot. One go through of your deck. Yeah, but Which you have is to get. The same I as mean, Nemesis. I'm. I don't. I don't think that. I like. He's good. There is no question about that. But I don't think he's on the same tier as Nemesis. Put him in S. Absolutely. Put him in I, S. I just again. Put him with the OPBL. You're outvoted. You're outvoted. Put this him in OPBL. Is, remember whose channel this is going on. I I have conceded to you guys on multiple things. Put him in OPBL. Put him in OPBL. This is two to three, Hawk. Put the, him in OPBL. If the yes! Comments come there after you go. me, I'm blaming you, you rat. Sure. Alrighty. Um, let's see. Who should we talk about next? Uh, Night Rose, Racer, F-tier. top of A. Night Racer, top of A tier. No question. No. Night Racer goes beneath Galaxy Prime. Yes. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I can make a she, concession on that. She literally obsoleted every five star when she came except out. Except for Braun. Except for Braun. Except for Braun. Yeah. But that's because they came out in the same wave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I she made Flamore irrelevant, basically. I mean Flamore is still relevant. It's it just it depends a lot more on your ability to play and keep secret actions down if you want to get her full bonus. Well nobody ever played Night true. Racer for the abilities. It was only I for have... the stat line. It was for the yeah, stat you can line. Play Night Racer for the for the abilities. It's just the fact that Night Racer's stat line is so absolutely ridiculous compared to everything else we know in the game. Exactly. Yes. People play her just because they have they have an empty five star slot in their deck. They're like, yeah. oh Night Racer. Exactly. So yeah, I can I can concede on that one. Um, let's uh, save some of the. Okay, let's talk about tracks. 
Trax, I hated Trax at first. I don't, like, I like him now, but I hated him when I first saw him. But Honestly, I, I think... I'd say D tier, top of D tier. Like, he has a bit of utility, but out, like, nobody has been able to figure the sucker out. My problem I mean, He's just that. a car. He's just, he's just a car. He does car things, but he does it in a very boring way. Yeah, My so... problem with him is that, yes, he's a car, but where do you put him in a car's deck? Like... Wheeljack is just so much better of a Yeah, thing. Wheeljack. That's his best comparison, so. Yep. Yeah, I'd say D tier, because just, again, it was like nobody could figure this sucker I out thing. I think he's beneath General Megatron. Yeah, I don't think he's D tier. I think he has a place in a cars list, but I don't think he's as he good as play. some of the other cars. Yeah. literally just said, like, why would you play him over Wheeljack? Right, but that doesn't mean he's useless. Because he does have the the place in the planes deck whatever that means <laughs> you know yeah like, he he does stuff with planes well then well he does stuff with planes but there's a bit of an identity crisis there so i'd argue d tier just because of that i think glow c I he's can, another he's another line writer i could see it on galaxy prime i'm putting my foot in the ground on this one I was, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll agree with Hawk here. Cerebral just to kind of, just to kind of be, <laughs> I, was, I was, I wasn't going to talk about him yet. I was going to be a little bit of a devil's advocate and be like, yeah, he's just kind of boring. He does car things, but he does it in, a, in not great way. But nope, you just jump straight to Cerebros. Yeah, Cerebros is F tier. Get him, get him the f*** out of here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, we're I not talking about Cerebros yet. Let's talk about Wind Charger first. I'd say somewhere in B tier. I think he's above Blaster. Yeah, yeah I, he's got—he's a really he does good. Have a good identity in Karstead. He has a solid place there. Yeah, you want him to go first, smack him, and he's then got a yeah, good flip ability in bot mode when paired with Cliff Jumper. Yeah, I but he doesn't hit. Really but solid. after that first turn, he doesn't hit nearly as hard. And Blaster's a little more consistent on the offensive front, so that's why I, I think say he's a seven star. Like you don't need him to hit he's like a truck every single time. I'm not yeah, saying exactly. that he Back does. Alone, I'm saying that it's up. just a little rickety in terms of consistency, whereas Blaster's a little more consistent relative consistent. to their star costs. He's con he's consistent. The fact that he opens up with a seven attack swing. Well, I'm looking at the course after of the that, overall you really game. You need to flip him once, and he's a useless character after that. Like, the whole point of him after that is to absorb damage. That's his whole role. And I think that's perfectly fine for the way they statted him. Uh, I'm, yeah. keep, I'm keeping him below Blaster, but we've all agreed he's B tier, so. Ah. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, I'll leave it. Okay, so. I'll I'll drop it. I'll okay. drop it like a dog with a sad bone. <laughs> okay, the World bone. Cup, Cup. Cup uh, tier. I think he's above... Well, I think he's beneath King Starscream. Because he does still do half of an arm cover crap. His I stats are garbage, but I'd, he does... I'd say put him at top of Cup tier. Well, the reason why he his stats are crappy... Is because his whole character. He, well, no. The reason why his stats are crappy is his bot mode effect of this can't take more damage, more than five attack damage from a single ranged character's attack. Right. Any kind of damage limiting ability means that the character as a whole is going to be kind of weak sauce. Right. I mean, look at Scrapnel. Yeah. But what an awful ability! Can we talk about that? Like, uh, like can we? Can we like, I I talked about this with Impactor. Like. I've waxed poetic about this, but th it's just so not in line with Whirl. I mean, we I've talked about this before, I think. Whirl is a homicidal maniac, and this is definitely not that homicidal maniac vibe, I can tell you that much. Yeah, the whole card does not scream Whirl to me. Yeah. I feel like originally he probably was a different character. But being the a do one damage, The do one damage to each non-defending enemy is very Whirl, but like... Just firing blindly in, into the the group of enemies, yeah. but yeah, his his Bob mode ability does not. It doesn't mesh with his character. It doesn't mesh well in a in a lineup because again, it's the same kind of thing as Windblade. You have to know that your opponent is running a specific type of character to make the most use out of World. He's a sideboard character that Denver saw the sideboard. Right. Okay, so we can agree on that. 
Um, let's talk about uh, Roadbuster. Not including that bullshit Scorp was running a couple months ago. Where is this sucker? I want to put him in cup just for the fact that he's not a leader oh. for a truck. Yeah, there is that. Like, he forgot how to do that. Wait, no, he's a, he, he, he's he a, is leader. a leader. I know he's he a doesn't, leader. He then doesn't have... He not? He doesn't have a combat trait, and he's not a truck. Right, that's it, that's it, that's it. So... They ignore me. Like, I'd say maybe, like, top of D tier only because of that bullshit Scorp was posting. Yeah! That bullshit that Scorp was using, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah cool below, below tracks, below tracks, I think. So, to me, he's the same as General Megatron. He just relies on upgrades. It's the same concept. I mean, fair, but, like... I... I... Again, there's a I, bit there's a bit more of an identity crisis with him just because there's no clear direction for where you want to take him. With General Megatron, you go attack drones, Rathillion plating, extra padding, load him up with upgrades, and just nuke everything on the board. He's just like, well, I want to play weapons and I want to play armor. So does every other deck in the game. Extra padding with him. The yeah, you. General Megatron. So, have you seen Energon Hustler's video where he paired? Uh, Roadbuster with Nova Storm. No, nope, but I'll Star. probably put that in the cards. It's it was so good to watch. It actually stood up really well against ATP Menasaur. Really? Yes. How? Okay. He just he just didn't get the he the uh well what it was was that they were doing like a everything is allowed. So that Menasaur was like, it had ATP's stratagem with triplating and blah, blah, blah. And he it, he was still putting up a really good fight against that Menasaur. Because of that alone, I will let him be in C tier. If like you can stand yeah. up to the bullshit that is ATP Menasaur, yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, I like Roadbuster. I think he's interesting. I want to see him... I want to see more support for Wreckers as a whole. I think that's part of the reason why um, both he and Whirl are kind of rated or ranked really low is because there's not a lot of support for Wreckers at the moment. Um, uh, Wave but, X exists. Well, yeah, Wave X. I'd, but even that is kind of limited support. Like, official support was literally just Scout Armor. That's it. They didn't and give him anything technically else. Technically, Cup's alt mode, but we don't talk about that. Well, no. Uh, I mean, that. Uh, in terms of record trait support, like, I'm not including Cup because Cup is a character. In terms of battle cards and building a deck around wreckers doing wrecker things, there's none. You have Scout Armor, which says, I'm going to die, but I'll give you two cards. Like, wow, how crazy. I've lost a character and I've gained two cards. I mean, it's not even like, uh, what is it? What is it? Fucking uh, insurance write off in BFA. Like, you want your sharks to die anyways, naturally. So there's a fit in that. With wreckers, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So with wreckers, it doesn't make any sense, unfortunately. Okay, so which is very much where that goes. We can agree. Okay, okay, so we can at least agree on what were you saying, legendary? Uh, in the canon, wreckers are dying left and right. But yes. Other than that, <laughs> that's the that's so one. that is so true. Fair Holy point. cow! Uh, side note: Read Last Stand of the Wreckers. Viewers of Hawks who have not read Last Stand of the Wreckers, read Last Stand of the Wreckers. It is a beautifully, it is a beautifully artistically done comic, and it is so well written. It's absolutely like the the top tier of Transformers media, cartoons, comics, etc. Yeah. <laughs> it's OPBL tier. You are yes. encouraging my viewers to read. That is a cardinal sin. Anyways, I pounds. will encourage your viewers to do whatever I want. Shut the fuck up. It's my channel. Anyways, uh, pounds. I I feel like this is either high C tier or low B tier, or possibly it's higher. Blaster. Around blaster. Uh, between blaster and wind charger. Yeah, I can see. I can see that. Up. Actually, yeah, just because again he hits like a truck, and let's not even get into that guess the secret action bull that Scorp was. God, well, that was also in Primus, but like Still. he's 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 such an interesting character because he he's the kind of character who you want to run blue, but at the same time he hits super hard, so you don't have to necessarily run him blue. Right. Mm -hmm. So because there's there's been aggro pound stacks. Oh yeah. I, I, I'm not saying there has or hasn't been. I'm just saying that, as a general rule, Pounce... Because most secret actions are much more blue-oriented, Pounce works really well in a blue deck. Yeah. 
Like, the only secret actions that really don't necessarily, like, work only in a blue deck that I can think of off the top of my head are, like, Turnabout Snare and Stable Cover. Hold the Possibly line. lose the battle. Oh, yeah, definitely lose Hold the battle. Hold the line! Gem signals. Oh, gem Germ signals. Pff, anyways. Um, Windsweeper. Uh, Windsweeper. I think this is, like, uh, A tier. I bottom think, of A tier. I think he's above... Oh, that's a tough one. I want to say he's above cliff jumper but i hate myself for saying that i do not agree with that at all like because he punishes your opponent for swinging at you actually you got a like... point actually you got a point yeah he, like he never had the competitive well he did he did, was not as competitively viable as shockwave or octone or any of the things up here but he did play a crucial role in pushing planes back into relevance in wave five very and, true and now with trigger convention floating around in the bfa meta which by the way if you run that deck blue it is a Beast. I mean, I've been targeted at least three times in Primus for playing that damn thing. But, yeah, he is just a house. And the fact that he can build himself up, because if your opponent decides he's to play house. around him, he te you can, he can move stuff off. Like, he's just a complete package. And then Saturation Bombing is also pretty decent, so... The problem is that you really can't play around him. Like, you you have to attack. You There is no, I'm not going to attack you this turn. You have to send characters into Windsweeper. Yeah, it's not like, like Yu-Gi-Oh! where you could just say, oh, he definitely has a Mirror Force. I'm not attacking. Get f***ed. He's like, nope. Game's like, nope, nope, nope. Get, get, go take a punch to the face. Hey, you go take a punch to the face, you little coward. But, yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, God, that silence. But, yeah, I think, we get, I think we're all in agreement on, uh... Yeah. Alrighty. As as one of the few Wave Five super rares I actually ever had my hands on, I I think Windsweeper is definitely a material. He's yeah, very good. I got really unlucky when it came to Wave Five supers because I think I got I mean, Roadbuster and two copies of Wind Charger, and that's it. My actual polls uh, when I opened my box, my very first pack was a Trax, and then my second, and then my second to last pack, I got a Pounce. And then I was stupid. I traded Pounce for Windsweeper, and then I just traded tracks for Sound Blaster and several cards. Lovely. All right. Yeah. Fort box Mac. Okay. So. We... Yeah. Sure. Do that. Watch Legendary's box openings. I guess. Yeah. I it. open four boxes of Wave Five on my on my channel. You can oh. see my polls there. Again, link in the description. Okay, Fort Max and Cerebros. We really can't talk about one of these pieces individually. We kind of have to That's, talk about them together. They're so bizarre because Fort Max is just so damn powerful. It's Well, I've had this conversation with Techno a couple of times. It's not really Fort Max. It's Cerebros. Like, you build the deck for Cerebros. No, like, no. he's the ultimate clown vomit deck. Like, even more so than Metroplex. Everyone says that, like... The Fort Max deck hinges on, or like Cerebros is the real meat and potatoes of the deck. No, all the fu all the damage that Fort Max himself pumps out, Fort Max, you want to remain there if as possible for as long as you can. Fort Max is ridiculous. Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna, gonna say. Insane. I'm I'm gonna put him. I say high seat my... here. No. Mm. I, what? It's... What? Put him in the bottom of B tier. Yeah, I can, I can, I can agree with that. But then, where do we yeah. slot Cerebros with that? The it's same. Cerebros, yeah. Because you can't play one without the other. So they're wherever one's gonna land, the other is also gonna land. Yeah. Okay, let, look at this objectively, though. Fort Max is what? Sixteen stars? Fourteen stars? Which one? Fort Max is fourteen. Cerebros is seven, and then yeah, that leaves you four stars because they usually play like eight. eight? What is he? Eight fifteen. Oh, uh, he's 8, like eight fifteen two. Yeah, in both fourteen modes. stars, and then Cerebros gives him old one, tough one. Right. To make him tw one, tw twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. 21. But then you also have the extra head that's thrown in there, so that's twenty. Right. Usually twenty four, because you usually play him with Grax, because right. Cerebros it's only has just... eight health for whatever fucking reason. It, it Fort Max for fourteen stars. His health may be low, yes, but he's absolutely absurd. Yeah, you got a point. The yeah. attack is insane, he, and then he ability flips that himself. double arm hovercraft your opponent. Yeah. Oh my god. He flips himself. He damages your opponent in both modes. Right. Like, 
He he does so much. He does everything. Yeah, I guess you got a point there. So, okay, I want to say move him up above Slipstream. I could agree but... with that. <laughs> no, I thought you were just gonna move Fort Max above Slipstream and leave Cerebros behind. I think just the fact that there's the combination Cerebros and Grex that allows you to force field your way through like. How many turns? Three or four? Three or four. So turns. many turns. Something like it, that. It's it's the, just the fact that that exists is the only reason he's up that high because really his ability is like it, it looks powerful, but like he has what eight health? Yeah, eight health, thirteen with Grax. If, if you're not playing with a health head, he's he's garbage. Yeah, he's absolutely garbage. Absolutely. But as soon as you pair him with Grax, that's when, as y'all said, the meat and potatoes come in. Potatoes! Potatoes! Give me the potato! Okay, so we've got every character ranked. Do we want to move anything around before we end the video? It feels wrong having Slipstream at the bottom of B, but I feel like that's correct as well. Yeah, I would agree. Like, all the other characters in B saw a decent amount of competitive success. Fort Max is just a... T is just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? He's just a yeah, and I will. He's just a beast, and then Slipstream is just there, like, okay, I make Plain Decks a little more relevant. Well, not just a little more relevant. Slipstream is like the main enabler for Plain Decks. Yeah, fair point, I guess. So, yeah, I think we, I, I think, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I guess, like, uh, I'm not too sure. Yeah, but yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah, mm, yeah, mm, yeah, 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 mm, yeah, yeah. That's all, folks. I really Thanks, Porky. Think he gives Blaster more credit than he deserves. I was I, thinking, so okay, that... Legendary, I have been thinking about that the whole time, too, and I keep looking at Blaster, and I keep going, he's wrong. He's not yeah. in the right spot. I I still am convinced he needs to be beneath Windcharger. I would actually put him below Gen um, Conqueror of Cybertron. Eh. I think, well, I wouldn't put him beneath Lord Mix. I wouldn't. All right. Move him below Wind Charger. I agree with that. I'm not too sure. Well, yeah, his mini cassettes did kind of help. He got lucky with the mini cassettes. Soundwave didn't have any good partners, whereas we're with uh with like, um. Steel pretty solid. Ramhorn's good if you know what you're doing with him. Right. And then Ravage is just a beast. Uh, Eject. Eject's like. Eject's mad. mad. Ravage is definitely the better call. And then you, remember, he he has that extra play. So that Ravage. Could that could draw you extra cards, and then you have, uh, you know, uh, fire drive set up, or you just go bold heavy with uh, lion eyes or so. I've Ravage, been a of lion eyes. yeah, Ravage. He play. was, he was, he was like a five. He was like three attack Pierce two. He was a pretty decent five star. Okay, but I okay. Mean, now that yeah. this feels wrong, having pounce at the top of B tier. I don't know why. No, I think no. that's correct. I think he's, I think he's fine there because. Yeah. He You're right. If... Repro should be. <laughs> no. No. I think we both be, both me and Tank agree that is absolutely not true. Because I think Pounce is in the right spot. He needs the right secret actions to work. But like he's made a couple showings. He's he's shown up in a couple tournaments and gotten to like top eight spots. Like at least a Perceptor Pounce deck that was really right. Cool. Yeah, there was the Pounce Perceptor deck. There, um, I can't think of a whole lot of other ones. But Pounce Pounce is a good character. He's well constructed. He's got His a stats are fantastic. Effect. Yeah, he's got good stats for eight stars. I think that's exactly where he wants to be. Or I think that's exactly where I would put him. Okay, so um, any other last-second alterations we want to make? Move Sound Blaster to B tier. Move Sound Blaster to B tier. Uh, yeah, it doesn't feel no, right. No, absolutely putting him not. With Blitzwing. It doesn't feel right putting him in Blitzwing like that. Yeah, I I agree because Blitzwing is one of those he, people lump him with Springer and kind of immediately poo-poo him, and they're like, "Ooh, Blitzwing's not good." Sound Blaster doesn't feel like he's at that level. Sound Blaster, it doesn't feel like when you talk to somebody about a Sound Blaster deck you built, they don't go, oh, you built Sound Blaster, how sad. They go, oh, you got him to work? That's kind of awesome. Okay. Like, well, I say put him above Slipstream. No, so he, uh, he really wasn't in yeah. No, Yeah, put him above. You know what? 
Yeah, put him above Slipstream. No, I disagree, just because, again, we've talked about this so many times. Slipstream was an enabler for playing decks. What the hell did Sound Blaster enable? The occasional uh, industrial-grade phase charge coming back? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I, again, like... He, I, I just can't... And I can't. Slipstream I, swing for 11. No. Oh, I don't know. I don't fucking know. Sound Blaster can swing for 11 before flips. What do you want from him? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I... I, 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 I think can. Sound Blaster's... I think he's where he needs to... Uh, I think that's a toss-up, actually. Because I do think you could... No! Put, <laughs> put Galaxy Prime back! I was wondering if you would notice that. Fucking moron. <laughs> what do you um, expect out of me? I should buy a Sound Blaster again. I should buy him back. I miss my Sound Fine, Blaster. I'll put him above B tier, but that's the last move I'm making. Do not suggest anything else. What? King Star Scream for OBBL tier. No, King Star Scream for Cup tier. Nah, no, I, I can't. <laughs> I cannot move him to Cup tier just because people at least had a rough idea of what to try to do with him. Okay, so are we good with this? Uh. I still don't believe Trax deserves D tier, but that's me. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I, I'm, he's still a car. He's a car, but he's just boring for a car. No, he's not. He does cool stuff. Oh my god. He does one damage and potentially gives another car or another melee character plus two or he, plus one. He can give himself plus two. Oh yeah, he can give himself plus two. How much does that let him swing for? Like, I don't remember. Uh, I don't... You could... Could you start your engines, untap him, gives himself plus two, he flips back, swings for seven. Assuming you don't put a weapon on him. And ping someone for one. Assuming they aren't, aren't a car or a plane. I don't, th I don't think... I, I don't... I don't think he's that good. Yeah, I say we keep him at top he's, of D tier. He's he's just bland, you know. Like it's not necessarily it's not necessarily that he's a bad character. It's just that he's kind of boring. Out of all of the really cool super rares that Wave Five gave us, like they gave us Win Wave Five gave us Windsweeper, who could move damage off of your characters and back onto your opponent. It gave us. Um, oh my gosh. Pounce. It gave us Night Racer. It gave us Pounce, who works with secret actions and gets higher attack the more secret actions you do. It gave us Wind Charger, who hits for seven on your opening swing before flips. And then you have that. Well, I mean, just because it he's feels bland, out of place. Just because he's bland doesn't mean he's necessarily there. Like, again, I've ranted about Impactor, about how bland he is, yet he was competitively viable. So, like, Trax just, again, he's just... Roadbuster is blander than Trax. Oh, my God. Roadbuster. Like Roadbuster. I, like... I think Roadbuster... Roadbuster is interesting. Roadbuster captures my brain on a lot of, on a lot of times. Like, when I'm thinking about... Like, decks that I want to try, I always think of Roadbuster. Because Roadbuster is, he's so weird. He's just, he doesn't fit your your normal conventions of melee specialist and ranged. He's a leader, and he does leader things. And that's all he needs to do. And speaking of things that we need to do, we need to wrap this video up. Because I just noticed that we've been going for an hour. Okay, we'll wrap it up. Alrighty, so this is where everything is going to be, even though there are some things on here I personally disagree with. But, hey, you maybe there's some things on here you disagree with. That's what the comment section's for, but be nice. Come on, we don't need to be starting any arguments over here. We don't need World War Three to start. Because, trust me, like if you... What? Oh, f I ate this. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so go ahead, argue over this in the comments. I'm certain somebody's going to disagree with the fact that, um, I don't know, Soundwave's in C tier, Metroplex is in C tier. Somebody's going to argue that Trypticon should be a little bit higher. I don't fucking know. Somebody's going to argue something. Let's just put it at that. So, anyways, that will do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, there's a little red button you can push down below to show it. Once again, go check out Tank's Twitch page. Go check out Legendary's YouTube channel. Uh, you, you, you won't regret it, especially considering that I am showing up there, even though me showing up there is probably lowering the value, so I'm, I'm not too sure. Anywho, I'm just going to shut up before things go off. I'm not sure when the next tier list video will go up, and I'm not sure whose channel it'll be on. It will most likely be Legendaries, but we will negotiate those logistics 
after this video is finished recording. I, and I did that all in one breath. So I'm just going to shut up. So yeah, that'll do it for this video. Peace out, y'all.